Hi, I'm Peter Clayson, the owner of Clayson Horse Limited. I'm just doing a presentation about some learning that I've been doing over the, a little while, about three or four years ago. I just thought I'd go over it again just to re recap myself and actually I'm going to be presenting it to my team. So I'm just doing a basically a, a test run of, of basically, it's just a test run to explain a little bit of information about identity and about what we're built up of as a person and the way that um, things affect us as our personality and also as ourselves, it's things about ourselves. Now, what I do is I'm going to use something um, I've used, which is like, um, basically I, I think about identity as an iceberg. So if I draw this out, it's our identity, if I, for my fantastic drawing skills, our identity is, if we imagine this as our identity, and as it's an iceberg, a lot of the identity is underneath the water. So if we do the water as this part here, so our identity is underneath the water, and this is us, and this is the surrounding environment, obviously. So with our identity, there is a few things that, that comes from it. Now identity, what is a result of this normally, basically, if I give this, it ends up being our behaviour. So if I put that here, so our behaviour is the end result of our identity. Now, there's a few things which are, I'd say, um, results of this or things that can affect our behaviour that are a, 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 an easy thing, like an external thing, I'd say, to it, and not as, as such as a deep thing. Um, everything under here is a little bit more harder work to change, a little bit more harder to get into, so I'm just going to explain a bit more detail here. Um, with behaviour, there is a behaviour can be quite easily changed by our decisions. and also by our actions. This is a thing that can actually change our behaviour. And it's above the water, as I call it. So with that, um, with, our, with our decisions and our actions change our behaviour, that gets our results. So I'll give you as the end thing, that ends up being our results. That's the results that we actually get. That is what the end result is. So our behaviour is what gives us the end results, and that's by our decisions and actions. Now, if you go one more thing, one more step down under the water, there is basically a little bit here, which is, which is our skills, which is from your past experience. Um, skills are things like, if I give an example, when you've driven a car in the wet, or in, say, in the snow, you've driven a car in the snow, you've gone around a corner, you've put your foot on the brake and it slid, you thought, I won't do that again. That's a skill thing that's been learned from past experiences. This also can be things from school, Things from colleges, universities, and these sort of things. It's, it's skills. So just below it, I'm going to put in a, an orange, it's skills. So skills is actually a thing that is from past experiences. Under skills, there's beliefs. Now, beliefs are things that you, you trust to be true. Um, if I give an example of beliefs, I'll put it down here. So beliefs are things that you believe to be true. Now, if I give an example of a belief, now, a belief is, is quite a funny thing, because a belief can be made up, this is giving a bit of a, of a different aspect to it, I'm going to add something extra while I'm running along here. A belief can actually be information that you hold to be true that's been given to you, but not actually 100% you have seen it for yourself. So a belief can be someone else's information that you've received. So if I give that as a belief that you hold to be true, so sometimes beliefs are quite a thing when you actually think about it. A belief isn't actually information from your own experience, it's information from someone else, it's an input. So if it give us a belief as a item, a belief, we say a belief, like Father Christmas. Father Christmas is a belief. Now, I'm going to give a belief a way to change beliefs, because beliefs are a harder thing to change, because a belief, we imagine beliefs, um, I don't believe something you can see on here, Beliefs can be like a table leg. So we go beliefs here. A beliefs are a table. So if, if a beliefs are a table leg, um, it has four tables, four legs to it. So that's why well, not very good table drawing. But it, let's say this is a this is a fancy table. It has four legs to the table. So with the being a father Christmas, is it? You believe you have presents. Presents are given. Um, your parents say he's 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 around. Uh, your teachers and your friends 
as a, as a child, and that supports your table leg. So if you imagine it's a table, I'll, I'll skip the uh, drawing on that, but uh, as a table, so the actual tabletop is your belief. Now, the way to change a belief is Father Christmas. So imagine you, you go as a child and you ask mummy and daddy, and you go, mummy, mummy, daddy, does Father Christmas exist? Now, as a belief, they would say, yes, Father Christmas exists. Of course you don't be silly. And then you think, oh, okay, that's all right then. So that's your belief kept. Those legs are there. Your parents have reaffirmed it. Then you go to school and go to the teacher. Does Father Christmas exist? Yes, Father Christmas exists. That leg's still there. But then you go to one of your friends one day, and your friend goes, basically, uh, to you and goes, do you know what? I found out last week, Father Christmas isn't real. So that's, you know, you think, no, my mum, my teachers, and there's presents always turn up. So that's rubbish, that doesn't real. But then, you see, you go home, and you go home and see your parents, and you say, mummy, mummy, daddy, daddy, does Father of Christmas exist? And then they say, well, do you know what? We have something to tell you. Now, because you've had your friends, one of the table legs has been kicked away, it's been got rid of, it's gone, that's it. Your table leg gone, then your parents said, you know what, no, he doesn't exist. So then you've got two table legs holding. So to be honest, you're thinking, well, but mummy, I get presents every year. And they say from Father Christmas, and they say, we write that on there. So now you've only got one table leg. leg. You've got one table leg, because that's a really, really rocky belief. Now, that, from that there, normally you can make the assumption to change it. But sometimes people will hang on to that one little thing before they've changed their belief. Now, you go to your teacher, does Father Christmas exist? My parents said it doesn't exist. My friends said it doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. And the parents and the teacher says no. There, it's gone. Belief is changed. Father Christmas doesn't exist. So that's, that's, a, that's a, um, it's a thing you can change. But obviously, it takes a bit more work. Now, underneath there, but... Remember, beliefs, as I said, are other people's perceptual information. So it's some of the, if you think of all your beliefs and you add them, if you write them down, what your wholeheartedly beliefs are, think about the information of where you got that information. Did you actually do that thing or find that information yourself 100% or was it said by someone else? Because that's one way to change beliefs. Now, beliefs, I believe, are like skills. If you can change your beliefs of how you work and better your beliefs and improve your beliefs, that changes your behaviour massively, because every time you change something lower down here, it can make a bigger impact up here and get you a better result up here. So beliefs are a good thing, I feel, to be open and changeable. And um, Obviously, there's some beliefs that is, I, I have beliefs is, is, is me. It's, it's like, I believe that this is the way it works. But this information here is from education, from all the courses I've done, from my coaches, um, from some of the stuff from, from other people, from seminars I've been to, things I've watched, and I've just sort of mixed it up and made it this way. Um, so that is a, that's from my beliefs, this thing here. So, right, next bit, values. Now, if you think of um, beliefs as a thing, beliefs normally can be, I'm gonna say here, beliefs can actually be changed normally. It can sometimes be with conflict, and, and I'm gonna put conflict up there, because conflict actually is very good to have if you have a, if you have conflict in a in a in good conflict is when you trust the other person you're talking about and you say Do you know what? I think it's this way no I think it's that way it's like two good friends having a discussion conflict is a good thing and conflict can change beliefs that's a, that's what that's also a thing oh and this conflict's another way of changing it I'm just adding that on there um, right next thing we're gonna go to the next section values values. What are values? We're right down here, values. Now values are a deeper set of the iceberg. So if we go, values. Now, what are values? Values are something that you trust and you hold very dearly in yourself. Now, an example of a value is integrity, it's honesty, um, it can be respect, Pride, all these things are values, and these are things that you trust to be true, and they're quite deep because they're just underneath beliefs. There's something, there's things that have been taught sometimes a little bit from parents' experiences, from friends' experiences, and it's from year after year after year, and it's it's, it's actually normally conditioning. Values can actually be a conditioning thing of your surroundings. So I'm going to go into deep more detail about how values can change your surroundings later on in this. Um, but values are something like, it's a little bit hard to change, but they can be changed as well. And there's, there's methods to change values. And the funny thing with values is, values aren't just positive ones. If we were actually honest about ourselves, values can sometimes be a negative connotation. So values can actually be something that actually can be an easy. If you give an honest thing, 
And on this value I can say I have sometimes is, I can see something, I wish I had that. Do you know what? I'm a little bit jealous of what they've got. Now that, in a way, jealousy is a negative value. So if I want to change that, I've got to think how to change that. And it's, it's a thing I can only change myself. Now, luckily that value I'm changing, and it's nearly gone, it's, it's, it's a value I'm taking as an example, that sometimes it's seeing something that can still be when it's really hot. And I'm sitting there and someone's got a nice cold beer and I'm thinking, I wish I had that cold beer, you lucky git. But it's, it's not, um, I don't, if you associate a positive thing to it, it's like, I'm going to get one of those beers. That's a change of it. Anyway, that one's a later on thing to explain. But values are, there's positive values and there's negative values. But the main thing I'm going to focus on is the, is the positive values and then the values of the person. So if you employ someone has someone in your business, they have positive values and negative values. And it's finding out what values suit yourself and what suit you. So that's another thing to explain later on. But going back to the other iceberg, values. So we've got right now behaviour, skills, beliefs and values. Um, next thing which is beneath that, um, is values is there's also another little thing that that can change it is you're normally fine with I'm going to go back to beliefs you're normally fine with someone's got belief and a reason to find out if someone's got a belief and they don't believe what you're saying is when they talk to you and you're saying do you know what it should be this way they'll go yeah but if you've got a yeah but come back to you as a communication it's normally they have a different belief to you and they have different information you can get yeah buts in values but normally it'd be harder to find so just as a little pointer, for beliefs when you're seeing that you're not, you need to change and kick some table levers away to explain to someone's different, you'll get a year but. So that's a, that's a little bit of extra term there. Um, next thing. Right, the end thing here um, on, the, on the, is actually identity. Identity is the DNA. Now this stuff is going to be well deep. So this stuff, to change this stuff, is going to be hard work. Um, this stuff can be changed by NLP, mindset, um, it can be changed by meditation and stuff like that. It's really in-depth sort of things to change your identity. Identity stuff is for the experts and you can do it yourself. There's books you know, I've read in it. There's a good book called um, Brain States by Tom Kenyon. That sort of stuff is DNA, so I call it DNA changing. It's identity changing things. It's changing your brain state of who you are and changing. It's changing big things. It's big things. Our identities are built up from basically who you are from your child. It's past experiences, your filters in your brain, and it's from childhood to now. So it's way back stuff. It's it's things if you give a, a identity thing. Um, I'm trying to think. Yeah, this is a good example. Is I suppose an identity thing is something that I find that if you, if you example of this is a comfort thing. This is an identity thing that's well DNA in there. Is do you know what? When I have some food, it comforts me. And the reason I comfort feet, I have some chocolate or some sweets, it makes me feel really good. I always have it. It's just, oh, it's just the way I am. It's just the way I am. Now, if you go back to your DNA when you were a child, it could be you had an experience where you see mum feeling there and she's having some chocolate and she's had a really bad day, had an argument with dad, and, and there's a really bad thing going on and really moving. She's going, and you see eating loads of chocolate and she's saying basically, oh, it makes you feel so much better eating this. So as a child, you associate with feeling better with chocolate. But actually it wasn't, it was just from an experience. I'm just, just from a, this is a real deep one. And to be honest, I'm not really caught up enough to explain that and that's really what I perceive it as. So don't hold that to be 100% to be true because in my belief can, they can be changed by information from other people. So that's my idea of DNA, it's well deep stuff. Um, there is something else here, I mean, with this, um, let's have a look here. Um, with, with this, there is, if I have this, this is the sort of, this is the iceberg here, but this can be completely changed, absolutely changed by one simple thing. Um, what I'm going to do is put it on here is, there's actually something around the whole of the iceberg, and that's the environment. Now, if I put that here, that's the environment. Now, the environment is the quickest way to change everything, bang, straight away. If I'll give you an example of this, an environment changes, if we give an example, is it's, a, it's, a, it's wartime, and there's, basically, there's only so much food, and there's food there to get, and I see the food there, and that food's from my loved ones and my family. Now, I've got other people want to get the food as well, now, would I change myself? Now, I'm a person that has, I have good beliefs, I have good values, I have good skills, I have good behaviour, but that food, if I don't get that food, my family could die. 
Now, that's a Maslow's Law effect, is I need to get that food no matter what. I will fight for that food because I will fight for my family's right to be living. And that's the only food there is. So that's a Maslow's Law thing, which can change the whole of this completely. So sometimes when people do things, it's actually, they are still good people. It's just the environment they've been put in that can sometimes force change to everything. So if I give you an example, environment I feel is a very big changing thing. Now, I've got an idea as well. My business is environment of the people what they're in. That's the office environment. That's about the way the office looks, the feel of it when you walk in there. That to me is very important to get that environment right and then it's easier to change these factors in here. So there we go there, that's that bit there. Um, I suppose that's everything I can go, that's the identity iceberg, that's from my point of view, that's my information. Um, it's for me, it's an important thing I think to use in business and also to use in with training people and that's why I'm doing it because I'm going to use this actually for coaching people about sales actually. I'm going to use this as a belief of how to, the environment and trust and, and using it in a sales technique sort of role. Um, but I've done it as an example here to explain about people and the way we are. Uh, I hope that's brilliant. I'm Peter Clayton there and Clayton Norse Limited. I hope you really enjoyed this. Um, it is my practice run, so I'm just practicing. So some things are, like I said, my beliefs can be changed. Some people are really good. If you want to go and buy any plumbing and heating things or bathroom materials, please go to tradeplumbing.co.uk. That's tradeplumbing.co.uk. Have a wicked, wicked week and enjoy your identity. Thank you. Bye-bye.